P perks coming this year? Someone questions. Uh, we have no announcement on timing for it. We it is something that, as uh, Severlin mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we are continuing to work on, but it has been pushed out a little bit, uh, due to kind of personnel needs to to have someone available to work on it, and the people available are currently unavailable because they're working on other stuff. Uh, related to Vecna Unleashed, and so we will be, we still are intending to bring out some new VIP benefits here in the future, but the timing of it uh, has never actually been announced. We've never actually given a, a formal date as to the when it would be, uh, but the when is going to be a little bit further out than we thought perhaps earlier this year. Also, thank you so much, Voodoo Spice. Lamania will be soon. I'll have more information about that. Uh, well, I guess right now. Let's uh, let's go a little bit into news. So, uh, first bit of news I want to mention is we have a patch that we're working on for next week. This uh, roughly next Wednesday should be update 59 patch 3. It's a pretty small patch related to a couple of bug fixes from update 59. Uh, there's a teleport kind of log error behind the scenes that's causing some game performance problems and so we're going to be putting in a fix for that uh, we're fixing a few kind of typos related to the new update 59 quest dialogue uh, there's a couple of bits there that that need a little work and a couple of hardcore fixes uh, one there's an issue right now with the golden eyes uh, with the hardcore NPC where you have to keep talking to that NPC for the eyes and the feet uh, when you every time you log out that'll be fixed so that once you get it you'll just have it from there on out. And we're fixing a issue with ranged weapons where their attack speed is incorrect uh, when you have an unmodified ranged attack speed. Otherwise, we have a, a new offer that we're going to talk about here in the relatively near future, some, some kind of kind of a special sale we got in the works. And I can't say anything more about that. And some of the work in next week's patch is related to that. So you'll, you'll hear more about that as we get closer to it and it debuts. But next Wednesday, we have update 59 patch 3 set. And uh, then the week after that is currently planned to have our first update 60 Lamania. Uh, that would be Macrotechnic is the main source of that first preview, but there'll be a few other bits for update 60 in there as well. And that is not next week, the week after that, roughly something around June 20th. We'll see how it all turns out in terms of the final timing, but that's the plan is to do it roughly not next week, but the week after that. I know I had said last time we spoke that perhaps this past week would have our first preview, but once we started getting into the check-in process and build process for Lamania, we realized we just need a little bit more time uh, before it gets its first preview. So we're going to give ourselves the time to do that. And uh, so you could expect that not next week, but the week after. And then I would expect to have a second preview perhaps the week after that to round out the month of June. Otherwise, the only real news per se is just that we got a couple of pretty sweet bonuses happening here right now. We've got a 15% VIP XP week. So that runs through next Wednesday. That'll give you 25% more XP if you're a VIP player. We also have a 10% XP boost for every member in your party through Sunday. So through June 11th, 10% XP for every member in your party, not raid group on this one, through June 11th. For those who keep track, we tend to do 5% including raids or 10% without raids. The goal is to get you on a full group roughly around an extra 50% XP for that. All right, I think I covered the news. So I've, I've really just took the week off work. So in some ways, you're probably as up to speed as I am <laughs> as to some of the things that are going on. I just got back yesterday and I, I had a lot of things to catch up on. I, I cleared out uh, a whole pile of work, but I'm, I really spent most of the day yesterday just being like, how many hundreds of emails? Wait a second. How many? That's, that's a lot. And so I, I got through all the, the work I needed to do. You have not missed anything. I don't think. 
mentioned that uh, we're continuing to work on VIP. But if it's someone's in chat saying, I just joined, did I miss anything? No, not really. I'm just going over the latest news and bonuses, letting you know that not next week, but the week after, we're roughly set for a Lamania preview. And next week, we have a small patch for Update 59. I can't share much news about the pre-order for Vecna. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to have more information as we get closer to it. You'll see, I think, some of the preview information on Lamania first because some of the bits that are going to be in the pre-purchase packages will probably get a preview on Lamania before you actually see the pre-purchase page. But per usual, I wouldn't expect to get a lot of information about the pre-purchase until we're actually ready to do the pre-purchase campaign. Do I actually work for Standing Stone Games? I do. Uh, ST Sparky. Uh, I'm the community manager for Dungeons and Dragons Online. Uh, that means I handle things like Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Internal communications outward, outward communications inward. Keep track of the things that you want us to work on. Make sure your voice is heard in our development meetings and things like that. How is the weather outside of Boston? Have we been affected by the wildfires? Yes, the weather sucks. Right now, it actually, I'm not sure, I was a little worried here that we weren't even going to have a Fridays at 4 because we have a huge amount of thunder happening. Some severe storm is getting ready to rip through the area. But otherwise, the air quality has been terrible. I know everyone's been, it's like the oldest news in the book because, you know, it's it's been the topic of the day, or of the week as it were, is just how terrible the air quality is in New England due to uh, wildfires in Canada, really. But it's true. I'm actually going to see if I'm going to put this in. This is the, I don't mean to make light of the air quality because it absolutely sucks. It's impacting people's health and it's really terrible. But I wanted to mention this. So I was going through our Update 59 screenshots as I was getting ready to schedule some social media posts. And we have some new screenshots of Legendary Droam uh, here. And I wanted to put up this one here. I'm just going to drop it in chat. Look at that. Does that or does that not look like some imagery you might have seen throughout the week this week on various news stations about a certain city. It's like it's like storm reach is being impacted as well. Uh, the reality is, though, the air quality has been uh, really bad in Massachusetts. It's stretching in through New York and and general New England. There. So what I've done is my son and I a couple days ago put together what's called a Corsi Rosenthal box, uh, otherwise known to the internet as a box fan air filter. Essentially what you do is you take a couple of air conditioner air filters that are rated MERV 13 or higher and duct tape them to a box fan so that the box fan's sucking in air, sending it through the filter and then, you know, cleaner air is being pushed out the fan. It actually works pretty well, though. It's kind of amazing. I had uh, heard of it because some people were doing it, you know, back in COVID and all that sort of thing, but it actually has made a big difference in this living room. We were kind of choking on Monday, Monday or Tuesday of this week, whatever day that was. And uh, once we put together this Corsi Rosenthal box, all of a sudden the living room is much more breathable and, and much better around here. But it has been pretty awful, so so I hope uh, people in the area um, are doing all right. I kicked uh, my stream back down from 60 frames a second to 30 frames a second because I was seeing some stuttering at the start of the show. I think my computer is just having a bad computer day or something. That, that was what the stop and start of it was about. Is U60 a second lead-up quest to Vecna? We'll have more information about what's in Update 60, but basically the way it is is Update 60 is the pre-purchase, and Update 61 is Vecna Unleashed. I am not sure 
what the content plans are for update 60 specifically but this really goes what we're trying to do and we did this first with isle of dread i believe as well which is that in the past our big updates which were pre-purchase updates and such ended up getting like point naming so it'd be like whatever update 48.2.1 or whatever was the pre-purchase but the reality is behind the scenes getting ready for that kind of effort really is a patch style effort and so instead of us just sort of arbitrarily calling it not a big update because for whatever reason we don't want to uh instead we're just being honest with ourselves and you and saying okay well this is this is a patch amount of work and so we're we're releasing it as a patch i have not heard of additional kind of lead-up quests for in fact, not Unleashed, so I do think Kill 10 Rats is probably it. But uh, we'll have more information as we get closer to it. There is stuff, though, in Update 60, besides just the pre-purchase campaign. Random question. There are four Sun Swords in DDO. Why is it that Strahd's Echo... Why is it that Strahd's Echo It the Sun Swords did not have the same qualities as the other? Short Sword, Bastard Sword style, I was disappointed in that fact. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. The... Sun Swords are not a class, as I understand it, of item, as they are specific unique items. And so, specific unique items are generally going to play by their own rules and do their own thing. Now, we've had that Sun Sword way back since, what, 2005, 2006. But other swords that are provide some kind of Sun-style effect are not necessarily intended to be operating the same way behind the scenes. Yes, Arcaniverse, I can tell you a little bit about the PAX Quest development. Just before I went over on vacation here this past week, I had a meeting with No Bob and some of the folks in marketing to talk a little bit about, okay, so we said we're going to do a making of, of this free quest here that's coming out later this year, the one that you voted on for the PAX East presentation. And we wanted to get some dates on paper about, okay, well, what does that mean? What are we actually going to do? So I would expect to see the first of those broadcasts to take place in August. The current plan is to do a mix of live streams of the development of the dungeon. You know, actually have Nobob over in Twitch chat, uh, working in World Builder and showing the creation of parts of the dungeon. But the reality of it as well is it's a little bit like watching... I mean, it's not like watching paint dry. It's actually going to be really cool. But I think we're going to mix it up with some pre-recorded video as well, so that when he wants to explain certain aspects of dungeon creation, he's not trying to both explain it and do it live in a condensed format. So the goal is a mix of live and pre-recorded, but predominantly live. And then we're going to chop it up afterwards for things like social media and YouTube and what have you. But the goal is to get started with that in August and do approximately one a month. So August, September, October, November, and then it'll release most likely in December. We're debating whether we want to do a fifth one as well. We're actually have him running the dungeon with folks in game. The only real issue with that is that it tends to be, December tends to be a busy month and people have holidays and things they need to do. But if we can make that happen, that's something we want to do as well. A great idea for a quality of life spell, Sonic spell that costs one spell point, only does a couple points of damage, extended range and wide cone, perfect for breaking breakables. A breakable specific spell. It would have to not scale with any kind of spell power or anything like that. It'd essentially be something similar to a level zero spell or a cantrip. But sort of a ranged zapper that casters could use if they don't want to use a throwing dagger or whatever. Sounds cool. Uh, by the way, STC Sparky, I'm seeing your thing about 
you took a long break and we deleted your account. We have not deleted any accounts. The only accounts that would no longer be active would be as if you never opted in when we became Standing Stone Games. You know, there was a legal requirement when we went independent with Standing Stone Games here that people had to agree to bring their accounts over. So if during 2017-ish, you never ever got back to us and the, the time to be able to migrate those old Turbine accounts is long gone, that would be about the only example I can think of where someone might have lost an account due to length of time between getting back in touch with us. But as long as that's not your case, you should be able to get your account back as so long as you know your username and password or can provide adequate proof that you're the owner of the account. So go to help.sandingstonegames.com, submit a ticket to account support if you'd like to, and see if they can't get you that old account back. Are there any balance changes planned? Yes. We're always working on balance. But yes, uh, I know specifically there is quite a bit of work happening related to systems that we'll have more about as we get closer to it. But you'll see that in the next series of updates. I'm trying to see. I was actually going to look quick if I could get more info, but now I'm not seeing it. Let me see what I can dig up. But I know, for example, we have intention to work on some Reaper difficulty balance. I know that we have additional game performance work that's taking place. And gosh, I'm just not seeing it here right now. Where? I had I saw emails. Oh yeah, we're working on. This is a, this is maybe a little too early to say. What it, we have a long term project that some work has been done on recently to update the character paths that are offered to everyone, but specifically catered to brand new players who are less familiar with the Dungeons and Dragons rule set. And as you may recall, the character, the pre-made paths for some base classes are pretty old, a little crusty, not necessarily all that great. I mean, they're fine. They were developed largely through Mornlands at the time. Uh, players on Mornlands worked with the systems team to create some of those base paths back in the day. But over time, as the meta changes, you know, they're not, they've become less desirable perhaps than they could be. I don't think we ever want to get to a pl point where pre-made paths are competing with character builds, you know, player builds. It's not really the goal of them. The goal is like, you really don't know anything about D&D. &D. You, you don't know what the difference between strength, intelligence, and dexterity is. These are for you. Um, but we do want to make them a little more uh, viable in some ways. So I, we have a plan to work on some, some paths work here in the future. So I'm looking through my email quickly because there's a, there was something I was related to balance I was going to bring up, but now I can't find that email. All right, well, uh, I guess I'll just have to wait until I'm in a little bit better position to talk about it. But we do have some balance work in the works. Uh, Wanna tuck, I'm not sure what you mean. We do daily dice is there. Um if you're talking about that one limited promo we did, uh we have no intention of bringing that back, but but we've talked so much about that already.
I'm reading chat. Do we think we could get a Master of Thorns epic feat to go hand in hand with Blightcaster? Perhaps? That'd be a question for the systems team. An everlasting Sonic Blast Wand? Yeah, I mean, that would largely take care of it, wouldn't it? Just have another. But I think the. Because right now, if, if someone's saying maybe do that instead of that level zero cantrip spell, just make it a everlasting Sonic Blast Wand. Okay, well, I mean, that could work. But you already have things. If all you want to do is break a box, you've already got throwing knives and darts, returning darts and returning weapons and things like that. I think the goal is to not have to unequip the things you already have equipped. So, in that respect, having an, an ever blasting wand doesn't really get the job done. I can't answer your question about why kukris don't count as daggers, Chris, the misword. Uh, I think you raise a good point, but I think by weapon type, kukris are not the same as daggers, and the idea of uh, Vistani Knife Fighter was specifically dagger, but yeah, kukris a kind of dagger. But that's that's sort of a D and D thing, though, isn't it? It wouldn't be the first case of that. I wouldn't expect, so what I mentioned about the character paths, remember at the start I said long-term project? So I have no idea whether we're going to see it before 2025 or not. I mean, I have no idea when that's coming out. But I know some of early work is, some work is, some actual work is being done to take a look at what we want to do for a pathing overhaul. Would it be viable, ever, someone is asking, to sell in-game teleports that are found in the ultimate bundles separately through the store, even if it was 1,000 points per teleport? You would love to get them. Uh, a couple things related to that is that it would be a one-time purchase, right? Because since all the teleports send you to the same place, you'd only really need to buy it once. Theoretically, we could. There's nothing stopping us exactly from offering them a la carte, although they've historically been part of the higher tiers of our expansions. And so I think that there would be a question of whether it would make economic sense for us to do something like that. But I know that there is a specific one that people want, and that's that bottle of mist. And so the thought has come up that in the future perhaps we could put that available for points in the store. Or we should just make it so that you don't need to have the bottle of mist in order to teleport to Ravenloft and the one that you already got's fine as long as you own the X-Pack. I don't know. We'll figure you it's a longer term discussion you could have about that. But there's several solutions to it. It's possible that we could see that bottle of mist in the store someday. Kukri is closer to a short sword than a dagger. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I know, kind of. But, you know, I mean, this isn't the first time D&D has played a little fast and loose with, well, isn't X technically a Y? Although I will say, Wikipedia is telling me a Kukri is a type of short sword with a distinctive recurve in its blade due to its origin. So if, if Wikipedia says it's not a dagger, but it's a short sword, then, you know. Any plans to make the salt marsh fills in another area and or adding new raid fills for those filigrees? Is there any plans to make the salt marsh filigrees in another area? Or add new raid filigrees for those filigrees? I, I guess I'm not quite sure what you mean. Ga Gen 1 and 2 both have raid fillies with them, but Gen 3 doesn't, and I think they should. I'm sorry, Van, I'm not understanding your terminology whatsoever. Uh, are we having planned... Salt marsh filigrees will likely stay in salt marsh. New filigrees are always being added to the game. So the answer to new filigrees in new raids, probably. Uh, salt marsh filigrees and other content, probably not.
The other option is we could just bring back Mr. Ravenloft Ultimate. Take care of it that way. Are we going to be seeing player housing in the next year? Probably not. It is, and it, as you point out, it is something that's been on the drawing board for quite some time. Uh, and we've not yet really taken real steps to move forward with it. But the idea of it is there. But then there's also an idea of doing an airship kind of update or guild update in general. Uh, so I think there'd be a question of, do we do that or do we do player housing? If we do that, what, how does that differ from player housing? And, and all that other kind of thing. But there's there's a ton of design space there that you could do. I'll have to follow up on that filigree question. So Ravenloft filigrees have filigrees available for shards as do the Sharn filigrees, but the Saltmarsh filigrees do not have raid filigrees associated with them. Saltmarsh does not have a raid, so that would be why it would not have raid filigrees. You would prefer to see Frogo in the DDO market independently? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> uh, Frogo is one popular fro frog. Frog. Frogo is a popular frog. Frogo is a popular frog. That's how it goes. All right, let's move on. Any plans to bring back new content for the Land of the Dead and Lamania option from the Teleporter in the Twelve? Not 100% sure I know what that one's about either. Um, have I just forgotten everything when I went left on vacation? I guess so. It was the before times. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. But... I feel like you're speaking another language here. I'm not not quite not quite understanding what you're asking me. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Far Shifter in the Twelve has options to go to Lamania and Delur, but you cannot pick those options. Correct. That was back in the day. I remember when that came out. I was That was pre-me being hired by then Turbine. But I remember the asking about that early on when I got hired and was told that was just some flavor text and it was never actually intended to imply that we'd be going to those other places but at the same time we always kind of wanted to go to every place and so that if we ever did do something like that then we would be able to utilize that if we wanted to so could we ever go to Lamania and Dolor through that specific NPC potentially but if we ever actually went to Lamani or Delur, you probably would get there through a different method than that NPC. So I guess in that regard, the answer is sort of a big old nope. But at the same time, there's nothing actually stopping that. And if we were to actually have some sort of teleport to Delur or Lamania, then sure, if we could make that be a, a route to get there as well, then that would be cool. Legendary Tangle Root, like we did Catacombs. Potentially, at some point, we could look at Tangle Root. I know that every, when the hardcore season comes up, we tend to get asked about the idea of finally fixing the 
somewhat unusual level discrepancy that takes place there. I actually forgot. I have I'm on the wrong character here. I have not played this character in long enough. Not since update 59 here that I need to redo my enhancements. This ain't going to work, is it? Let me actually redo that again here. You have been noticing the Traveler pop up in recent content. Uh, do I recall any older content where the Traveler makes an appearance? No, uh, the Traveler is really about... Uh, the Traveler is really about the most recent story arc that came about prior to Isle of Dread. So I'm not, fr I don't think the Traveler has had any secret appearances prior to that. Is it just my spells that got reset? What, what got reset here? Why am I not? What happened to my sunbeam? I also have a lot of 20, I have a lot, okay, that's what happened. I must have lost my tree. Well, what do I want to do? I don't really want to deal with this live on the air here. I suppose I could just switch characters. Let me do that. Uh, the potential for adding more weapons from PNP is something that, you know, always comes up as an option. The issue we tend to run into is that the weapon types that folks would like that aren't currently covered in any meaningful way on in the game would be fairly large art, animation... And engineering tasks. I'm thinking things like spears or pole arms. Mm. Yeah, spears or pole arms are probably the two biggies. And so the idea of doing it is something that comes up pretty regularly. But the project to actually do it would be a, a massive one. I was totally unprepared on that character, unfortunately. So let me swap over to a different character. I know. I so I I myself in in real life have been very busy the past couple of months, really. But specifically this past week and a half, I picked up my son for the summer break, and then took a week off so that I could just spend some time with him without having to work from home all day. 
And so that's what I've been doing really the last week and a half or so is just sort of doing anything other than work. Uh, it's important, you know, I love DDO and I love playing DDO and, and I like doing hardcore and, and everything. But the reality is as well that if I don't give myself like an actual no work, that means no DDO, no Lotro, no answering emails, no checking Twitter, no getting back to anyone from private messages on the forums, don't even look at the forums, you know, that kind of thing. I, I need to do that periodically for my own health and sanity. It is really important because it's very easy with this kind of gig to have your time off be kind of time off and your I'm not working be, well, I'm not really working, asterisk. And so when I do have some specific time off like this, I have to force myself. And, and yes, it is in many cases forcing myself to be like, no, and I mean it. I mean it. You you don't. You don't. And if I don't do that, and the reason I need to do that is that you do need a mental health break from the internet. Um, you know, the internet's a great place. People are, all the DDO players are awesome. But, you know, we live, everyone knows an online world isn't always, uh, isn't always people acting kindly to each other. And so it's important to take an actual break when I do that. And so that's what I've been doing uh, rather than playing Diablo 4 or something like that. Also, to be honest, I was, I'm not... Uh-oh. I don't want to say this. If I say this, I'm going to cause controversy. I'm not actually a big Diablo fan. I think it's a perfectly fine, excellent game. And I'll play other things. <laughs> but uh, it's a great game, I'm sure. So... I mean, you can see the impact that the game has had on just gamer culture in general uh, to a massive extent. You know, the game is game is huge. And it's because they do so many things right. But do I actually want to spend my time grinding through that stuff? Uh-oh. I got too much to do here. I got hardcore to get done. That's what I got to do. I got to I got to double down on hardcore if I want to get those uh, those footprints, which I want to get those footprints. So that's what I'll be doing. But like I say, just like just like with um, you know, uh, other big games that come out, I I don't talk crap about other games. They're they're great. I mean, there's a reason it's as big as it is, right? Even if it's your own personal taste is going to lead you somewhere else. I wonder it's so quiet in here. I forgot. I turned down my volume. As the salty tang in the air grows stronger, you notice a bamboo bridge crossing the ravine. Perhaps it leads back towards Henrita's camp. Uh, yeah, the error here is poor, but it's definitely better today than it was earlier. And uh, I was saying earlier, I actually made a box fan air filter, which is pretty amazing. Kind of act super amazing, really. If you had told me that a couple air filters duct taped to the back of a box fan would be roughly the equivalent of buying a 
$600 air purification system, I would have said right. But I think it might be true. I think it might actually be true. It sure has cleaned up the air in this living room. And it involves duct tape. How cool is that? Save hundreds of dollars, clean your air, and use duct tape to do it? I'm down. Near the pond is another vine thrasher structure. This one adorned with a dead jungle panther. Howls of righteous fury pierce the jungle canopy. The most controversial thing I said today was uh, my preference for duct tape instead of gorilla tape or gaffer's tape. <laughs> I'm actually more of an electrical tape kind of guy. I mean, you know. Oops, that's where I want to go. We're going to have a whole lot more information about expansion-related goodies when the time comes for you to be able to purchase them. But I can't really give a lot of secrets out at this point about it. I apologize. The mini expansion is definitely cooking along, though. You're, you'll see, not next week, but the week after, a macro technic and some other bits from Update 60. And then in the weeks to come, you'll see a whole lot more about Vecna Unleashed and get the opportunity to preview it on Lamania. So, pretty soon, really. But it's going to be a couple weeks yet before sort of the hype train takes off on that one. I'm also not in a position to give you information about you know, like how many dungeons, size, scope, all that sort of thing. You know it's a, being described as a mini expansion, so I would expect it to be similar in scope to some of the other mini expansions we have. Which, how much difference is there between a mini and a regular expansion, I think... Um, It's usually really only a couple of dungeons, right? So, maybe a little more than that. But I would expect this upcoming expansion to be similar in scope and size. Still have to do. 
Oh, can I change position? Maybe? Oh, how have I done on hardcore? So someone's asking me about my sitting position. I guess I'm not quite sure. Is it that the camera's just off a little bit? I noticed that. I suppose I could adjust that a little bit, but... Someone's, uh... Someone's commenting on my sitting position. I don't really understand what, what the question is there. But I can tell you that right now on hardcore, I am going through the level 5 quests. And I am level 7. And so far, so good. But, you know, as I said, we, uh, last really two, two and a half weeks have been very busy times for me, and I've not really had a whole lot of game time at all, much less uh, time to focus on hardcore. But I've been cooking along slowly on it, and my goal is to hit 1750 favor and level 20 and get the seven pieces of the rewards to get the footprints. Those those are my goals for this hardcore season. And I know I'm only got what a little over a month yet to do it, but that should be fine. Should be fine. A little bit of dedicated time should be all right. So, I don't want to over, hmm, how do I want to put this? I'm concerned that if I say, for example, that we are intending to do a little bit of balance work in the future as a response to a question of, are we ever intending to do balance work in the future? The answer is always going to be yes. There will never be a time that we will not be working on balance in the game. That is a permanent area of work that will be done for the game. And so I'm concerned that by confirming that we are working on balance, that you're going to misread the intention of that statement as to something that might be bigger in scope or meaning than is intended. That said, we do have systems folks who are doing work related to game balance for the future, uh, for this update, just like we do every update. And there's a few specific areas that we've talked about, up to and including a little bit of work on Reaper difficulty that'll be happening in the future. But I don't want to give the impression, nor kind of overly excite people needlessly, that we have some kind of major balance thing underway. Does that make sense? But yeah, we, we do have some kind of bigger balance work that's happening. The character path work could be considered balance work. The uh, Reaper difficulty work would definitely be balance work. Uh, new enhancement trees and epic destinies are uh, always balance work. So, I guess I would need to know more specifically what your concern is related to balance. And maybe say a little bit more. But like I say, I've also been on break and I saw a bunch of emails come in over break. I don't want to... 
I couldn't find the email I was actually trying to talk about here. Let's see if I can find some. Oh yeah, uh, dungeon alert content. You know, we've we'd recently been doing work related to dungeon alert, and we do have additional work related to dungeon alert that we'll be doing in the near future. So, you know, as we get closer to that, you'll see it on uh, Lamania, and then live. It is true, though, that if, if you're like, well, is this the update they're going to be working on game balance? I mean, we're always working on game balance. I, I don't think there's ever been an update in the history of DDO where at least some aspect of the work being done wasn't somehow related to making the game uh, challenging, uh, yet competitive and doable and other things like that. So it depends what you mean by game balance and what your specific concern is. Man, I am so unprepared today. That's what happens when you go go out on break. I need to hit up a. I need to hit up a vendor. I don't need that mirror, but I do need the sentient XP. Okay. Twice. Exclusive. Gosh. All right, all fine then. Good enough. Oh yeah, so I could mention that. Uh, someone had asked that question earlier. We do have our summer sales that kicked off this week. That means we have special weekly deals each week in the DDO store, and that is going to be running through July 13th. We have five weeks of our summer sales that'll be happening here in Dungeons and Dragons Online. This week, we've got 30% off plus 8 stat tomes, 50% off the Tome of Racial Action Points plus 1, 50% off the Tome of Universal Enhancement Tree Action Points plus 1. Now, I would put it in a caveat similar to what I saw in the forums that if you already have one from Sharn, then this does not stack. So you don't want to purchase this if you already have it from Sharn. But if you don't have it from Sharn, it's 50% off. And it's the Tome of Universal Enhancement Tree Action Points plus one. And then we have 75% off select cosmetic armor and stuff, cosmetics or Warforged as well. And that runs through June 15th, through this Thursday. So plus eight stat tomes, racial AP, universal AP, cosmetic armors, and Warforged cosmetics. Select ones of those. Um, through June 15th. Also through June 15th here, we have the Tensor's Weapon Box back. So if you're looking for your Sentient XP, looking to get your Sentient Weapon a uh, little bit um, boosted up, want to check out the Tensor's Weapon Box in the DDO store. And uh, Nimvin, you're going to have to wait till next week. The hint I provided related to uh, maybe a particularly unique sale that will be coming up in the near future. We'll have to wait until that is ready to be announced. But we do have something in the works that you'll hear about pretty soon. Maybe we can talk about it next Friday at Fridays at 4 on twitch.tv 
slash DDO stream. We do have shows all weekend long, so please do take a look at our schedule over on the Twitch channel. These videos are archived on YouTube and on Facebook. I'll be back next week with uh, more information about some of the things I couldn't talk about today, latest news, and a whole lot more. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. And I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Hope you have a great time in hardcore, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.